Hello, good morning, good afternoon, uh, and hello from uh, sunny Brno, Czech Republic. Uh, Michal Jurik, Product Manager with Runcast, and uh, I have Ivo Ivailov, our uh, engineer uh, for VMware. Hi, Ivo. Hello. We still see people joining, um, so uh, we'll give it two more minutes and we'll start with our presentation today, which will be focusing on the automation of the issues uh, using the VRO. So let's begin start shortly. All right, let's get started. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Again, uh, Michal Ancherik, Product Manager with Runcast, and welcome to our webinar about automation of the VMware issues uh, using the VRO and the Runcast. Um, I can encourage you also during our presentation uh, to ask question in the uh, question panel of the GoToWebinar. Uh, we'll try to respond it as uh, if we will be presenting stuff. Uh, this time it will be really the hands-on uh, presentation, so uh, get ready for a lot of technical terms uh, and fun using the VRO workflows. I hope you will enjoy it because uh, this time the result will be very nice. Uh, we will be showing how to automate the issue that uh, we are able to detect thanks to Roomcast and fix it automatically uh, through the VRO on dozens of the vir virtual machines uh, and also then prove it by scanning the environment again to validate if the issue is there or not. But for some of you, um, we may also introduce uh, Runcast and uh, what we do. So uh, you can take Runcast also as a troubleshooting tool. Uh, when you have any issues using VMware products, uh, something happened, for example, the purposing of that, the biggest one, uh, the, the issue that everybody is aware of, uh, you try to search about the purpose of the issue, you try to search about the symptoms, and that's uh, how you can run into VMware Knowledge Base, and also you will very likely run into uh, Runcast. And because Runcast is automating uh, that knowledge, that means it takes the unstructured data and able to scan your VMware environment. Uh, today it's a vSphere with its vCenter and vSAN and very, very soon uh, NSX, which is already in the beta. And we are able to tell the admins uh, what's wrong with the configuration, what are the potential problems or actually existing problems. So you can use it reactively in case of troubleshooting and very quickly uh, discover uh, why the issue you saw happen or you can also use it up proactively. So you can scan the environment and we will be able to detect and tell you what you should fix to not even run into those uh, scenarios. And as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, this time we would like to show our tight integration with the VMware Realize Orchestrator. Uh, many of you know what is it, but uh, just to recap, uh, we would like to use this tool that allows to write and create simple or very complex workflows without actually coding anything or at least anything much uh, 
in case of some scripts, you still need to uh, use a very, very simple language, but it's far away from the regular coding. And mostly uh, it's very easy to uh, debug or uh, find issue and it's very visual tool. Uh, Vue-like orchestrator uh, allows to actually connect with uh, many third-party plugins. Uh, so you can uh, associate uh, all of those third-party products you have within one workflows and use the data to, uh, from three products to execute in one, uh, one result on your vir virtual machine or ESXi host and et cetera. And the Runcast is not an exception. Uh, we are also able to integrate and uh, we would like to show you how you can get uh, the result of Runcast uh, analyzer within uh, the VRI orchestrator and how it can be uh, used for automation. And also it's good to know that uh, VMware VRO as a realized orchestrator normally comes with your vSphere license. Uh, so some of you may be surprised it's already there, but uh, you were not using it yet. Uh, also to give you a little bit highlight of how Runcast Analyzer works. So the Analyzer is the OVA appliance. Um, so it's on-prem product, uh, which you will deploy on your uh, vSphere environment, namely um, uh, one of your hosts creates a virtual machine. This process typically takes about like 10 minutes. And then it already comes with a database of the uh, of the pre-configured, I would say, knowledge base. Uh, and uh, then basically, it needs to be pointed against the vCenters. Uh, so you connect the vCenters, uh, typically it's enough to have read-only mode, uh, and we are able to scan uh, the configuration and produce the results, which typically, again, takes on um, the medium-sized environments uh, one, two minutes. Normally, the Runcast analyzer checks the uh, updates to our Runcast update server, uh, to the internet connectivity, but if you want, uh, it can work fully offline, so it does not need to send any data. But for your convenience, you know, it's better to uh, have the connectivity because we are publishing the updates of the knowledge. Uh, depends on the, I would say, the, the new articles uh, that appears on the VMware uh, site or if there is any security flow like Spectre and Meltdown uh, recently, then we do it even on daily basis. Uh, so it's good to be uh, uh, in sync, like, for example, any antivirus out there. All right, so let's uh, actually jump into a short demonstration and introduction to uh, uh, Evo's demo. So what I would like to show you is uh, just the interface of our product and the situation that we will be automating today. So let me actually share the analyzer. And by the way, uh, if you go to demo.runcast.com, uh, you can actually play with this uh, uh, demo yourself and you can uh, get the feeling of uh, the functionality and the environment. So now we are on the main dashboard, the web application, um, the scan happen. Uh, we have two connected vCenters here and we see plenty of issues that have been detected. Uh, there are a couple of areas uh, how we split the issues and their categories so you can choose the uh, angle of your view. You can take it from the VMware layer, so you can take it from the management angle, you can take it from the network or storage angle, or you can uh, be more interested in best practices or security uh, hardening rules or policies like uh, and profiles like Disastic. So for example, if I go to KB's Discover, it will provide me with this result set where I can expand on each and find the details. So this is the result will be detected on your vCenter and that means the KB, uh, by the way. And in the findings, this is also the result of the automation. You can see the objects, so where we find uh, the issues. So, for example, the host version, the host, and the virtual machine. Plus, you see the findings, findings value. And the finding value is the reason why the issue was triggered. And it typically means also the reason that you need to deal with and you need to change it, you need to fix it somehow. And this is uh, what Evo is going to demonstrate. Besides that, uh, we also work with logs. So you can use the syslog uh, uh, from, your, uh, from your virtual machines or hosts and forward it uh, to our uh, Runcast Analyzer instance. And we are able to also detect uh, KBs on fly from those logs. 
uh, or also show you some kind of a correlations and uh, and the symptoms of uh, even non-documented issues uh, that, that we can find them in blogs. But let's go back to the automation demo. Uh, we decided to show you something regarding uh, the KB that's uh, associated with uh, adding and uh, removing um, devices from your um, virtual machines. So uh, there is some partial problem about uh, being uh, the device being uh, removed. So we would like to kind of uh, mitigate this problem. And uh, and uh, there is a couple of ways how to how to fix it, how to solve it. And as you may see, it requires some config changes, and uh, it's quite complex. And imagine that you would need to fix it uh, on uh, let's say dozens or even hundreds of your virtual machines. And that's a great segue uh, to Evo and uh, how to use a VRO to actually fix and automate this one KB uh, Runecast is able to detect on, at the moment, 18 objects, as we can see. So Ivo, I will give you the screen sharing and you can uh, show our audience uh, how to deal with it. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. So it all looks good. Um, hello again, everyone. Uh, my name is Ivo. So I'm going to walk, walk you through the um, steps, how to build your own remediation workflow with uh, minimal efforts. So I'm really quick going to open again the, the KB, which we'll be focusing on today. Um, as Michael mentioned, it's, uh, it's related to virtual machine settings. Uh, the resolution suggests um, adding uh, additional advanced configuration parameter on the virtual machine. Um, doing this to one or to a few virtual machines would be doable for the VCR web client, but um, implementing such fix on um, a lot of virtual machines would require some kind of automation and um, we chose to to show you a demo how you can achieve this with uh, vero and using our um, plugin so let's move to to vero and uh, let's go to inventory review the room analyzer um, plugin for vero was released uh, a few months back uh, version 100 um, the main goal of the initial version was to uh, make the the connection and integration with run customizer easier from vro with uh, the plugin um, we were skipping all complex uh, rest requests handling responses par parsing json files and stuff Everything is handled on, on the back end, on the plugin side. The plugin is uh, packaged and distributed as a VM OAP um, file, uh, which is getting deployed to VRLIS Orchestrator through its control center. So it's um, web-based, so you can access it with, um, um, on, actually there is a link on, uh, when you type in a browser the IP or FQDN of your VRO on port 8281, there we have a link to go directly to the uh, configuration center. Um, once you deploy um, the plugin, uh, you would need to, to restart the VRO service in order to change it to take effect. Um, then what uh, basically you would do as an initial deployment would be to go through the library room customizer this is actually a folder which was uh, packaged with uh, with the plugin itself so we're shipping additional like, uh, workflows we can help you with the initial configuration you can uh, use it to add room customizer to remove and to update if there is some change in the address or the access token um, the adding uh, room customizer is um, very easy. 
I'm just going to show you the, the initial screen. Uh, basically, you need to provide a name, an IP or FQDN of the Runecast Analyzer, and the API access token, which you can generate in the Runecast Analyzer user interface. Mm -hmm. uh, then there is, of course, settings for the uh, self science certificates. But cancel that. Once, uh, once you complete these steps, your run customizer will appear in the inventory view under the run customizer plugin menu. Uh, so we're all set until here, so we can um, we can move to what's new with the new version. So with version 102, we added an additional content which is shipped with uh, the plugin. So um, we included uh, helpers workflow, workflows which will um, assist you in uh, building your remediation workflow. So uh, in addition, uh, we included uh, helpers action elements as well, which uh, are going to help you uh, convert from RC object, like a VM or a host, which was reported from Runecast Analyzer, to actual um, VC virtual machine or host system objects, which is manageable through VRO and you can manipulate it, change settings, etc. Going uh, through the API Explorer, uh, you can see what uh, methods and properties are available for own custom analyzer. So you can easily see that you can uh, get affected objects by specific KB, and actually this is the one which we're going to use today. You can uh, get affected objects by KB in only one specific center. You can get all issues, or you can initiate a scan of, of uh, specific center, providing its uh, UID. Mm -hmm. So that's good, I would like to say this is the most um, important uh, for the listeners uh, to remember because it kind of acts like API, uh, they would normally call uh, uh, through any other endpoint, but now it's available in the VRO so they can talk to our uh, analyzer instance uh, through these methods. Yes, and it has the complexity of uh, dealing with the response from uh, with normal API usage as the responses here are uh, objects, again, of type RC issue or RC affected object. So okay, with this, I think we set the scene so we can start um, creating our workflow. So let's create a brand new workflow. I'm a fan of a live demo. I'm taking a risk to do it uh, live now rather than showing you a recording. Uh, we have... <laughs> quite an audience, so if I encounter some issue, I'm, I'm sure that some of you may be able to help me. I will certainly. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, let's start with the naming. Yes, and, uh, I just want to include the, mm -hmm. the KB in the name of my workflow, so let's name it fix KB this. Okay, now we're presented with an empty schema. So uh, first of all, uh, we need uh, a reference to our Runecast analyzer. I'm going to general and um, general tab. So in here, I'll add an uh, attribute, a local attribute, which will contain uh, our Runecast analyzer object on which Later on, we can call the method to get the affected object. I'm going to name it uh, just simply RC. It will be a type of Runecast analyzer. And the value it will be our Runecast analyzer. So basically, the type is inherited from the very first step you made, which is connecting uh, the Runecast instance yeah. to the VR, just to Correct. repeat for people. Uh, the second, we would need uh, somewhere to store 
the affected objects which we retrieve from Runcast Analyzer. We'll store them in a, another attribute and we'll use it later on in the workflow. The type here will be an array of RC affected objects because that's what we expect as a response from Runcast Analyzer. But I'm not, not going to set any value because I don't know what I'll get. Mm -hmm. Can people also uh, set this attribute later when they're building the workflow? Yeah, that would be possible. So, so I'm going back to the schema. Um, I'll drag first element, which will be a scriptable task. And let's name it with the actual task on what's going to do. So here we'll get affected objects. We need to adjust the in parameter. So we're going to use uh, the attribute which we just created, which is referencing to Runcast Analyzer in order to, to be able to access from this uh, particular element. And the output, as I already mentioned, would be an array of um, RC affected object, objects. I already created this as well. It's called affected. Okay. So now we can move to scripting tab. And um, actually, this is be the only code which we need to write. So uh, here we're going to assign the results of get affected by KB as parameter. I'm going to pass the ID of the KB. So by this, um, the affected objects from this KB will be stored in our um, affected array. What's next? Um, we cannot perform an actual um, task or remediation steps on this type of objects. We need to convert them to actual VC managed objects in order to be able to manipulate them. Basically to say so, now we have the list thanks to Runcast Analyzer, but we need to make it, the, I would say, virtual machine so VR understands uh, what is the type of this thing. Correct. Now we know what is uh, affected as an uh, object uh, passed from Runcast, but now we need to make it as an object which uh, VRO will be able to manipulate. Mm -hmm. Perfect. For this, I'm going to drag an action element. And here I'm going to choose one which is included in uh, the plugin package. It's called RC object. So in this case, I'm going to choose a VM because I'm going to convert those objects to virtual machines. It's also great that uh, there is this IntelliSense functionality. So if uh, the users simply remember that everything uh, we use is uh, start with RC, then you can just try to type it and see what methods uh, we offer. So yeah. uh, it minimizes the search for the functionality. That is correct. Now, obviously, we we'll need to adjust the input and output parameters of this um, of this action. Basically, we we'll need to pass uh, the objects returned from Runcast Analyzer, and as an output, you will get an actual object, virtual machine objects. So I'm going to set up. The input is going to be our affected code array. And as an output, I will create as a local variable, and I'll name it uh, VC VMs. So I know that those are already virtual machines objects. Can promote. Uh, I can validate that it's ready by checking the general tab. I see the VC VMs created with array of VC virtual machines. So we converted them to 
virtual machine objects. Now, um, the best practice usually is uh, not to apply a, a workaround or a fix the whole bunch of your infrastructure at, at one time. Um, it's always recommended to start with a testing environment to confirm that the results are as, as expected. So uh, therefore, I'm going to use another workflow which comes with the our plugin package. And it's called select. Yep, I can use select VMs and select hosts. In this case, I'm going to use the select VMs because we're focusing on those. Again, adjusting uh, it input and output. The input will be our VCVMs, which is the output of our previous uh, action, con the conversion. And as an output, um, I'll make it again local variable. It will be array of virtual machines called selected VMs, and it will contain only the VMs on which we want to apply the, the fix. We're going to promote that as well, confirming in general that it appeared. It's actually very simple. You're just uh, passing the output to another input and uh, basically using some process uh, to restructure the data. Yeah, that's correct that uh, it hides all the complexity behind though predefined workflows and action elements. So here it's more or less just visual uh, connection of elements. Mm -hmm. It's pretty powerful. Yeah. So now since I'll be applying the fix on more than one virtual machines, I'm going to, I'll need to loop through the, the whole array of selected virtual machines and apply, apply the fix on each of them. I'm going to use... So basically this is the most wanted part because it makes the work for all the admins. Go through the list and apply the fix uh, to the whole list of the virtual machines we detected. Yep, I'm selecting again a workflow which uh, is uh, prepackaged with the plugin. Uh, it, it will set uh, advanced settings for the virtual machine. That's exactly what we need now. Again, um, set up um, the parameters. In this case, um, we want to loop through all selected virtual machines. So I'm selecting only this array, which is the output of the previous workflow for select VMs. I don't need to look through the key and value because those are uh, the setting. It should be the same applied for all virtual machines. I will set this value. Going back to KB to see exactly what has to be uh, set. And this is also a good part to mention is uh, obviously we have to tell the tool what to fix. So it's coming out of the, uh, the KB and the Runcast result. Uh, so there is just that one configuration parameter you need to take, apply it here, and then it will just iterate through all of those VMs and, and change the configuration. Correct. So I can so it's copy and paste promote case. a note and uh, that that's it actually. We can uh, run it. Okay, and magic comes here. Oh, yeah. so, I like how you can actually visually see, yeah, see where what's going is. exactly now. So the virtual machines are converted. Now we need to select on which which virtual machines we want to apply the six. So I'm selecting five and six. So now my remediation will be applied only to those virtual machines. I'm clicking on submit. And here on the log, you can see that Devices hot plug set to false on VM five and six. Now, if we go back here and to the scan, so we see that they're still here five and six, and this one we sent our Deneb, so we can just rescan it and come back to to this KB, and we would expect that those two VMs are not here anymore. Okay. Does it sound simple? 
And as you see, I mean, it's uh, pretty straightforward how to define the workflow of like three steps, 10 minutes. So I do believe uh, many of you may find different uh, KBs or issues that could be automated. Because also everybody allows the automation tool to do a different, different stuff, different level of uh, configuration changes. Okay, I see 16 yeah. objects only. We see it, the object number count decreased and now VMs five and six are not here anymore. Excellent. Thank you, Ivo. So uh, there was nothing to afraid of. I mean, uh, your live sessions went well. No issues, even though yeah. I was hoping for some drama. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. And uh, everyone uh, on a call, you know, this is uh, just a demonstration. Um, this plugin is not yet officially part of uh, the analyzer. However, uh, we will reach out to everyone on this webinar so you can download it and test it. And also, uh, I would encourage you to tell us, to contact us back and, and tell us what kind of remediation uh, you would like to uh, run such a true automation because be seriously thinking to automate uh, the issues fully uh, on behalf of you. And uh, it would really help us to know what kind of KBs, what type uh, you would let the system to fix on your behalf. Because we understand the security elements and security aspects and uh, not, not every single issue can be automated because of, uh, for example, uh, the changes that may affect also the other functionality. So thank you very much today. Uh, this webinar again will be uploaded to YouTube and uh, we will follow up with the uh, email to you. Thanks for watching. Thanks Ivo for coming and uh, for the live demo. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, we will hear each other soon, uh, I hope, uh, next month when we will come with another webinar series. Thank you very much. Have a great day.